Continue. Thank you, Judge. Good afternoon, Mr. Neumeister. Good afternoon. I wanted to backtrack just a, a little bit. So, from what we're understanding this morning, on June 10th of 2008 and June 19th of 2009, were protocols violated, forensic protocols violated? Absolutely. And in violating those protocols, was evidence tampered with? Technically, if you look at the definition of tampering, yes, evidence was tampered with. And because that evidence was changed, wasn't it? That's correct. And you had visited Mesa Police Department several times, is that right? That's correct. And in visiting those times, was there ever a time that you weren't able to access the drive that you came to review? Yes, one time. What happened? Uh, I, it, I believe it was a paperwork snafu and protocol was cited that uh, I couldn't see it because of uh, a protocol that we had to have, I believe, a 24-hour notice to see the drive. So in other words, when you got there, was the was Mr. Alexander's computer there available for you to look at? No. And did you ask to see if they could just pull it for you right then and there? Yes, but a protocol was cited and I respect protocol, so I didn't challenge it any further. And was it Detective Flores who told you that protocol involves 24-hour notice for him to be able to retrieve that? I believe he said it takes 24 hours, and I, I don't believe he said he had to retrieve it. I think it was the evidence. It has to come from evidence. It requires 24 hours of uh, paperwork notice or, or notice beforehand. Okay. So in that instance, Mesa was following protocol. Yes. We were talking earlier about the privacy scrubbers. Yes. Um, were there a number of files that were zeroed out? Yes. Can you explain to me what zeroed out means? Well, there's different ways to delete files. About 70,000 files were zeroed out, which means they were deleted and or scrubbed in such a way that uh, there was no timestamp, no metadata. Uh, basically, they were gone. And what makes it really interesting, those 70,000 files were zeroed out by a program that wasn't on this computer. There's no way that anything on this computer could have scrubbed those 70,000 files in that particular manner. So something outside the computer had to be used to scrub these files? Or throw out these files? A program, a time program for modifying time files would have had to been used to scrub these programs, and there was not one on the computer. And when files are zeroed out, um, does that cause problems then for being able to look at it? They're gone. They're gone. <laughs> Zero it out. There's there's nothing there. All that's left is the you can see the files. It's just zeros. Uh, so uh, there's about seventy thousand files that were just evaporated without any of these programs that are on the computer. There was no program on that computer that could have eliminated those seventy thousand files and zeroed them out. And again, that's a rough number. It may be more or less. We haven't added them all up yet. We're still in the process, but. For zeroed out files, there, a good majority of the drive has been scrubbed. Okay. And these zeroed out files, these 70 some thousand files that have been evaporated, you said, are there, do these have to do with what happened on June 19th or June 10th? There's, there's really no way to tell because there's no metadata um, on the files. So what we would normally do is we'd look for uh, if a USB stick had been put in. For example, an outside, uh, the way you would normally do something like that would be an outside program and access the computer via USB stick and do it that way. Okay. But we haven't got to that yet. Uh, we would be able to find if a USB stick had been put in at any time. Uh, but as to what program did it, there's no trace. All right. And so um, these zeroed out files could be actually in addition to the damage that was caused when Mesa violated protocol on June 10th and June 19th? <laughs> Um, <coughs> Not saying that we don't know who did it, right? That's correct. Okay. But could these zeroed out files be in addition to damage that Mesa caused? I, I'm not sure I agree with the wording that there's 70,000 files that are missing that are zeroed out. We don't know who or what did it. We just know that there's 70,000 files that have no dates on them that have basically been eliminated by a program that was not on the computer. We don't have a time that it was done, and we don't know who did it. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, we were talking earlier about um, some of the links to pornography sites. Can you pull up, we, we were talking specifically about um, the fact that there was a ton of viruses on this computer, right? Correct. Um, but there are also porn sites that um, were specifically accessed by the computer user. Am I saying, is, is that correct wording? Yes. And so when we say specifically accessed, that means that it, it wasn't Take, the computer didn't go to that site necessarily because of virus only. That's correct. Okay, so can you take us to an example then yes. of sites that were accessed because of a hand typed in search? Right here. Here's, a, here's the first batch. Pull up a couple hundred of them, but here you go. Okay, so these, what we're looking at right now, are hand typed in searches. Um, actually, the words came from searches, and you can see there on the, the with the little red asterisk, some of those uh, are ads or things that came down because of the words that were searched. Okay. So you've got the YouPorn uh, actual site, and then it says watch, and then you have, I'm not going to say what it says, but... Um, um, are you talking about the first line where it says good, anal, and perfect? Yes. Okay. What about it? Well, uh, those those terms, that, that particular link would have come from terms that were searched. In other words, it may have just grabbed a couple of the words and pulled up videos or something that it, it tagged with those particular search terms. Okay. And same with halfway down, halfway, stop. So we're looking at other sites that are perfect blowjob blindfold. That's correct. That, yes. So is this a result of someone hand typing in some search term that brings them to this site. That's correct. And then we have a little bit lower than that. We have cute girl giving a hot low. Uh, that's below. Oh, let's see. Well, you've got quite a few different types of terms. But yeah, I see those. I mean, there's quite a few more graphic things here, but yes. Okay. And so these, these sites are basically because somebody hand typed in a search that led them to this site. That's correct. But again, it may not be those words in this order, but it's going to be very close to, it's going to be words that were tagged because of their search. It's going to be, they might have typed in one of these words and, or two of these words, and it, it linked to this. Okay. So these were, but these were not from a virus. These were manually searched. Okay. And can you zoom out so we can see the date on these? June 1st of 2008? Yep. And this is just, I just pulled up two pages. I mean, there's, we can pull a lot. And this is from the history DAT files. All right. And so in your entire examination, do you have a history of these types of pornography sites being accessed? Oh, yes. Okay. So not just June 1st of 2008? No. And you showed us earlier, I believe it was September of 2007, where an adult film database. Yeah, I, I literally printed out probably of pages like this that are full, maybe 90 pages, and then I just thought, it, what, what's the point? At some point, it's just like, there's so much. There's so much, you mean there's so many pornography sites that were accessed? Yeah, there's just so many, and some of those, again, were from Zlob, but a, a lot of these are just hand-typed uh, search. Okay. But again, if you go to these kind of sites, that is where you're going to get Zlob. Zlab is, is what you were telling us earlier about how it gets downloaded because it's asking you to download a recorder? You're not going to get a Zlab virus, which is a, a downloader from, uh, from... Costco? What's that? Costco? Well, you're not going to get it from Costco. You're going to get it from a site like uh, a similar site, a pornography site, and it's going to ask you, do you want to watch these type of videos? And you would click, yes, I do. And then it would, it would download, Zlab would download a player, a special player, you could watch the movies, but while it's doing that, it's also tagging lots of other sites, lots of other porn sites. Okay. The, we saw on your list of um, antivirus and ma anti-malware things that, the 19, the things of 19 things that uh, Mr. Alexander had on his computer in order to try and keep the viruses off. Well, again, that's not a complete list. Uh, right. we've, we've had limited time, so, yeah. Okay. So, so far, the list that you have today, um, we see spy, is Spybot on there? Yes. 
Yeah. Spybot S and D is that Spybot Search and Destroy? Yes. Uh, Spybot Search and Destroy is that going to prevent Mr. Alexander from viewing pornography on his computer? No. Why not? It's not designed for that at all. Well, what's it designed for? Spybot is is a free program you can download if you think you've got malware on your computer. And what it does is it tries to eliminate malware. It is a free product that you download. Uh, it is not meant to block anything. It is not meant to block any pop-ups. It is not meant to stop any viruses. It is meant to, in 2008 it wasn't meant to, uh, it, it is basically an after-the-fact cleanup tool to clean up malware. So you said it's not going to prevent pop-up pictures either? No. In fact, with Zlog, you're going to have uh, just, I, I about 523, that computer just exploded with uh, lots of pop-ups. I mean, it was just, it was, it was part of the situation was it might have been even difficult to, to shut down the amount of porn that was on the computer. There was so much from the Z Lab. You said 523, do you mean May 23rd? Yes. Of 2008? Yes. Okay. Is that one of the times that Z Lab was downloaded? Yeah, it was downloaded a number of times, cleaned off, and then downloaded again. Uh, in your review of this drive, did you see any sites um, that had to do with child pornography or teen pornography? Oh, uh, let me just see here. Um, the, teen, the hits on teen, let me just pull up some of this stuff here. On teen, I had uh, 6,125 hits. Tell, now, me what, tell us what we're looking at. Okay, this is a list. It's 166,214 uh, hits on words that I typed in that would have had to do with. Um, now, I want to explain something on these. Okay, let me these. just stop you there real quick, though. Okay. This list is a list that you typed in as you're looking for pornography sites on the computer. Is that what you Correct. Mean? Okay. It helps you if you type in a word like. Um, one of these words. If you type it in, uh, it can take you to all the links that it's contained in. Okay. Now, there's one other thing I do want to point out that's real important. Sure. On some terms, like the word uh, tween, you'll see there's 11,645 hits on tween. Yes. It also pulls up words like between. Okay. So you have to make sure that you go through and you search uh, the files that are actually tween sex or tween luster. They're like under teen or under girls. There's so much stuff under girls that is just those 3,204 terms, and almost all of them are porn site with the word girls, something or other. And you know that because you've looked through some of them? I actually have. I presented it as evidence. I just don't really want to pull it up. It's, not, it's in the disk. Okay. And so some of, these, some of these terms that you searched, and by the way, can, can any forensic examiner do this, search terms? Sure. I mean, that's, uh, that's the first thing you'd start with. Uh, if, if somebody, for some reason, had killed the cache file by turning on the computer, so your cache file's gone, the first thing you would do is, is start with something easy, like, the easiest thing would be, like, like pop in, uh, oh, in case, or FTK, or whatever, and start doing searches of URL history, uh, history DAT files, that sort of thing. I mean, in case can do this? Yeah, sure. In case is very good, very good at that. It's actually a very, very straightforward program that is a good start program if you're not going to write code, if you're going to just, if you have to crank up stuff in a hurry, in case and FTK are very good. Okay. It's just that you're, you're not going to get the same level of depth as if you were doing it with multiple programs. We use so many different programs. Just in audio alone, we use over 200 different programs. On this particular thing, I think we used a half a dozen different programs. But if, if someone isn't using as many tools or programs that you're using, if they're just using the simple NCASE program, they can type in something like penis, right? Yes. And they can pop up with the number of sites that lead to the, with that name in it. Yes. And they can type up slut and find the sites that have that word in it. That's right. Okay. All right. And so this is something that you did. Obviously, did you, did, did you use NCASE? No, I used, on this, I used, uh, one of the guys used in case, there were three different gentlemen working with me. One of the guys used in case, I used on this, I used autopsy 310 and 311. Okay. And that's 
What does what is autopsy? Uh, it's a it's a it's a freeware type tool. I wanted to use the simplest possible thing to see if I mean if that can find it, anything can. So okay. I left the FTK stuff to a, a couple other guys, and then I had one other guy doing actual searches of different with different programs, but. We work with FTK and then uh, with autopsy, and autopsy is about as simple as you can get. I got all of this off of autopsy. So even using a simple freeware of autopsy, you were able to type in these search words and find that these words were all over his computer? Yes. All right, so you were telling us about uh, child, anything with related to child pornography or teen pornography. Well, under girls, and again, I don't want to pull up these sites. I mean, I have lists of tons of the, I like to look it over. I just don't want to pull up these lists because they have the website addresses on them. Okay. Um, and they're like really vile, but they're girls. Uh, it's just vile stuff. So I'm not going to pull it up, but I did disclose it so you can look at it if you want to. It's just the links. Uh, so they're all there. But um, um, yeah, go ahead and rephrase that. So you were able to, so you were able to find specific porn sites that were related to teen and child. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Lots of girls, lots of, uh, lots of, lots of teen. And you usually the word "slut" would would be part of that. You know, often it would be <coughs> the sex, just sex alone. There's sixty-eight thousand one hundred and two hits. And there were some words that uh, I didn't even type because it was taking so long for the, and I'm running liquid cool, really fast computers. And it was taking so long to, because there were so many hits, I just didn't even bother to print them. Okay. Um, you, and you were, I think you were just explaining, it seemed more to the judge, but explaining to the judge that there's these sites that you have on the disk that's been disclosed that show the actual sites of where some of this teen pornography and child pornography, the yeah. address of the sites. And these are actually the sites that I pulled down were sites, the ones that I have, about 90 pages on, on here, are not sites that were just in search history. These were sites that were on the computer. These are the stuff that was in the registry. Tell these us are, what that means. Okay. Uh, that means stuff was basically brought onto the computer at some time. It wasn't just up in the, in the cloud or in the internet. It was on the computer. Okay. So I didn't, I basically, the, uh, the stuff that uh, I pulled down, uh, the 90 pages or so of, of, of stuff I pulled down, this is stuff that was actually in the registry and not just in search history. Okay. In your, in your examination, um, did you examine anything else besides uh, Mr. Alexander's computer? Um, I was asked to look at the uh, cell phones and uh, another, dr uh, a couple other drives, and some cameras. And some of this, some of this evidence, it was all well. All of this evidence was contained at Ma the Mesa Police Department, right? All except one camera. Okay. And did you get that camera from the court clerk? I got it from your office. Okay. Did you have a? Did they have an evidence tag on it, like it came from the clerk? Yes. Okay. Other than that, everything else did you get from the Mesa Police Department? I didn't get it. I went to see it. Sorry. You went to go see it at the Mesa yes. Police Department? Yes. Okay. So was there anything in, in your review of the other evidence that you looked at, was there anything unusual about it? Well, I'm not... relevance beyond the scope of what we're here for today, the compact Rosario computer? It's, it's relevant with regard to misconduct on behalf of the state. But we're here on behalf of the compact Rosario computer. If they want to raise some other issue, you have to put it in writing to allow us to respond. It's in writing, Judge. It's in the original motion to, that we filed to dismiss because of the state's misconduct. All right. So the defense is requesting that we consolidate the motions in this hearing. Is that correct? Well, this all has to do with just forensic information. Your Honor, we we're asking the court to consider, and I filed the motion related to the state's misconduct related to the child pornography as a supplement to the original motion we filed back in November where we document, or excuse me, not November, uh, September, where we document the misdeeds, the disclosing of sealed information, as well as the uh, computer equipment and the relationship with the phones as well. So then you do want to consolidate both motions in this evidentiary hearing? Yes, and I believe there's a, uh, there was an, a, another, sub, there, there's two supplements as, as it relates to it. Yes, that's why we asked for it to be continued when we filed that original motion because then we started 
uh, learning more about what the state, uh, the, the greater extent of the state's misconduct. All right. Well, I, I understand the state may not have been aware of that. I'll allow you to proceed and give the state an opportunity to prepare. And if you need additional cross-examination, then you can have it in the future. All right. You may continue. All right. So with regard, you said you looked at uh, cell phones, other drives. Yes. Is that right? And cameras? Correct. Okay. Is there anything unusual about this evidence that you looked at? Well, on all the cell phones, all of the data cards and all of the SIM cards were missing. There was not a single card in them. In other words, a cell phone is not a cell phone without a SIM card because the SIM card is the uh, basically your your contact info with uh, your cell provider. Uh, they were all missing, which uh, and also there were no data cards in any of the cell phones. So basically, they were useless. Um, also, one of the things that I, I, I want to make note that uh, is that. Um, you really have to treat cell phones these days as computers, especially smartphones. There's a ruling uh, in forensics, it's a U.S. government versus Kramer, that you should use a write blocker with cell phones as well because they're considered computers now. And so that's kind of in, it's being argued at this point because it's hard to use a write blocker with a cell phone because cell phones want to have a two-way handshake with the computer mm -hmm. that you're using. But uh, uh, so I didn't want to actually plug them in without a write blocker because they would ask for driver updates and that type of stuff. So when you actually looked at the cell phones in this in this case, did you ever have a chance to turn them on or anything like that? Um, I did with a write blocker, uh, but uh, I couldn't access them because um, they want two-way communications. <laughs> and it was really kind of useless because they didn't have the SIM cards in them. They, they wanted updates, right? Yeah. Uh, and again, it, you know, without the SIM cards in them, um, it's without any it was fairly pointless. I mean, okay, could you show us a picture of one of the cell phones you looked at? Okay. All right. I'll, I'll just run through a few of these if you want me to. So this is a Samsung flip phone. Uh, I'll just go through here. Let me just pull up something that would be a little more. Um, I don't have the actual controls on my, uh, that I would have here, but uh, so none of these phones had any of the uh, data cards or, uh, or um, SIM, uh, the SIM cards or data cards, and they were all gone. Okay, and, and what you're showing, what you showed us so far was a Motorola Razor and a Samsung flip phone, is that right? I've, I've submitted all the photos for, uh, uh, into evidence, but um, um, I, you know, I can just go, go through this stuff, but it, it's just uh, basically all these phones didn't have any uh, any data, any data cards or SIM cards. They were all gone. And during the time in 2008 or whenever they were last used, are you telling, do, do phones need SIM cards in order to be used? <laughs> you can't use a phone without a SIM card. A SIM card is your ID to the, let's say you have Verizon or Sprint. Your SIM card is your personal account with that provider. Uh, it's the SIM card that's what is important. For example, if I take, if I have two iPhones and I take the SIM card out of my iPhone and put it into another iPhone, it recognizes that iPhone as my account. The SIM card is the heart of the matter. Okay. And they were gone. And they were gone. Yes. Uh, and did you look at a PC Pocket phone also? Yes. And was there anything unusual about the PC Pocket phone? It's the same. No SIM card, no data cards. And what about, you said you looked at drives. Um, it's really interesting. I'd like to go, one other thing, I was meant to go look at a camera and it was smashed. Here's the picture of the camera. Is this the video camera? Yeah. Okay. Fortunately, we had uh, playback mechanisms for these type of DV tapes, so I was able to, to, to get that. But that if, and, uh, if, it, if it weren't for the fact that you had something to be able to play back this, these tapes, you wouldn't, were you not able to do it on this camera? No, the camera, as you can see, is smashed. There's even a gear sitting right here that, uh, that came, came out of it. And this is how the camera appeared when you first looked at it? That's correct. Okay. What else was unusual? Um, when we got the still camera, uh, Miss Arias' still camera, we wanted to go over and recover some of the, any deleted shots. There were supposed to be two SIM cards. There was the case for a SIM card. I'm sorry, you said SIM cards. You mean uh, excuse me, data cards. Okay. There was a case for a data card, uh, but there was no data card. 
Okay. And was there only one data card located with that camera? It was the one that was in the camera, but there was a case uh, that was empty for, and I, I understood there were supposed to be two data cards. Okay. Um, one other thing I think was very interesting is this right here. Now, I printed this out for their forensic guy to take a look at. Um, this is on Arius' external Mac store. What's interesting on this, on I, going I, just... And let me stop you there, just so we know what you're talking about. So there's, there was also uh, two different external drives that you... Correct. ...saw. And both of those external drives, is it your understanding that they belonged to uh, Miss Arius? I don't know. This is the one I'm talking about right here. I believe that they did. Uh, this is the one that I had to examine that, uh, that I currently had, so I, I'd have to check. Okay, is that one known as a Mac store? Yes. Okay, tell us what... Was there anything unusual about the Mac store external drive? R really unusual. Okay. This is what's really wild about this drive. There's not even a format on it. Uh, there's not even a master boot partition on it. Tell us what that means. A master boot partition would be the very lowest level of operating software that you would need to at least get the drive to what's called mount or, or, or boot up. That's not even on there. Now, when you buy a drive, when you just buy a drive and it's blank, would it have what you're talking about on it? When you buy a drive, it's formatted, and it usually, let's say, for example, this Mac store. If you buy an external Mac store, it's going to have uh, an application on it that probably says install driver, or it might automatically install. It might have Mac store's automatic backup utility or something like that. There would be a master boot partition, and it would be either formatted with a what's called a FAT32 or uh, you know, anti-SEF uh, formatting. Okay, so, and so on the Mac store that you looked at, that was, that was taken by Mesa Police Department. What did you find with that? Well, there was absolutely nothing on it. So I ran some tests on the actual drive. Okay. And uh, every sector, everything is okay on the drive. There is nothing wrong with the drive physically. There's, not, there's no problem with the uh, sector counts. There's no problem with cycle counts. There's no problem with uh, the, the record heads. Uh, and the, so there's nothing on it. But the really interesting thing is right here, if you look where it says quick removal, default. Right, on the right-hand side of the page that you're showing us? Yes. All, all drives, when you get them as a portable external drive, come with this marked as a default, quick removal default. Uh, that means you can unplug the drive without having to shut it down. This, for some reason, was, or it was somebody knew what they were doing, and they set it to better performance. Uh, now, that was not done only thing on the drive of property wise that I could find that's it is the better performance um, that somebody had modified that on it but outside of that does that tell you Mr. Neumeister that somebody at some point used the drive or access to the drive yes okay but now there is absolutely nothing on it it is it is uh, we're not sure how that was done we can look into it but there's not a trace of anything on that uh, there's a number of utilities that can do it but to actually pin down which one it is. Well, and what, what are some of the ways that we would see something like this happen where there's absolutely nothing on the drive? Uh, there's, I'd be speculating, but you could degauss a drive. What's a degausser? Um, in the old days, police departments used to have, if they had tape recorders, uh, they would take the uh, television stations see this too, or they used to when we shot beta and that kind of stuff. Um, a tape in order to recycle it, put it back to use it again, in order to keep there from being underlying conversation or underlying data, you would run through a big mag electric magnet or electromagnet called the degausser, and it basically eliminates anything that's on the tape. It erases it. Uh, you can do that with a uh, hard drive, too. But what, I'm not, oh, what happens if you do that to a hard drive? It just comes up with absolutely nothing on it. There's no formatting, no partitions. That, is that one of the potential ways that you could get the results that you got on this Mac store drive? Again, I'm, I'm just speculating. You're asking for ways. Right. There, that would be one way, yes. Um, that would The fact that there's no trace of anything on the drive, um, and not even master boot record, would indicate that it was an unusual situation, considering that everything on the drive works. There's not a single bad sector. The drive is a, is a, is a perfectly good working drive. It's just that there's absolutely nothing on it. There's nothing on it. There was another external drive also, wasn't there? I believe so. I don't re recall. Uh, was, there, was there an external drive that was broken? Yes. One of them was marked do not use or do not boot up because it's a bad drive. Um, 
And uh, let me pull that up. I mean, this drive right here was an internal drive that was marked uh, do not power on, it has bad heads. That's a Western Digital. Um, But, uh, is that the Western Digital Drive? Yes. All right, and and you did, you didn't did you do anything with that? No, it said uh, do not power on. It has bad head, so we didn't. So power that on. one, when it says it has a bad head, does that mean a mechanical failure or something? Uh, yeah, it usually means it, it could be with the right mechanism, or it could be a platter error. Uh, how do you when you have mechanical failures when something's broken? Mm -hmm. How does that happen? Well, uh, there's a number of ways. It could be fatigue. It could be dropped. Those are the two most obvious ways. Fatigue meaning it was used too much? It was used, uh, if it, these things will last five or ten years, some of them. The older drives, maybe five years. So more than likely it was dropped or mishandled. Okay. Was there anything else unusual about the evidence that you looked at? Um, it was, well, it was a pattern of really getting nothing except uh, being able to pull the stuff off of uh, Mr. Alexander's drive. Uh, and. Um, I was surprised that if the drive had been in evidence five years, uh, that uh, this stuff hadn't been found. I mean, five, or no, six years. Six years. And when you say stuff, all, you mean all the, among the stuff is all these porn site hits? Well, if I recall, you had said uh, that on stuff that I had reviewed that there were no viruses, and there were tons of viruses. I mean, just an unbelievable amount. And also that there was no porn uh, links or URLs, and it's just loaded with them. So with regard to the viruses, <coughs> I've exhibit two, which is a transcript of Detective Melendez's testimony. Did you review that part Brief, of it? Briefly. <clears throat> and Judge, this is something that would be part of the record from the first trial. I don't know if the court wants me to move it in, or I just want to show it to Mr. Neumeister. But I can certainly move it in. Is it something that you want me to consider? Yes. All right, then I think it should be moved into evidence. Okay, then. Is there any objection? No, she can, but she can just ask him directly what she wants. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I have no objection. She can ask him directly what she wants rather than showing it to him. Obviously, he's already looked at it. All right. Exhibit 2 will then be admitted since there's no objection. Thank you. Could I have Well, do you have a copy marked for purposes of this hearing only? Yes. It's exhibit two. Exhibit two. Yes, for this. Mr. Newmaster, you're aware that Mesa Police Department had its own, obviously, its own forensic uh, investigator review Mr. Alexander's drive, right? I, I, I haven't seen or I haven't reviewed a image from them. So I, I don't know. I've understood that, anyway. Well, it's difficult for the police departments to have their own forensic people to look yes. at evidence, right? Yes. So <clears throat> if, if Detective Melendez testified he was asked, and I'm looking at the very bottom, but I mean you didn't investigate it any further as to what that meant, product ID virus alert. You see that? Yes. And he answered, and I'm looking at the top of page 129, by looking at the computer and checking for viruses, which I did, I did not see any. You see that? Yes. Somebody has some forensic experience, based on what you've seen in this drive, would it be possible to look for viruses and not find them? We're talking about the drive we were just talking about? 
Yeah, we're talking about Mr. Alexander's drive. Uh, no, this thing is loaded with viruses. So would you expect somebody with some forensic background, even a five-day training background, if they said they looked for viruses, would they be able to find it? Easily. And Mr. Newmeister, I also have Exhibit 3. This is the testimony from Detective Melendez from January 14th of 2013 that the defense will move into evidence also. No objection. Exhibit 3 is admitted. Detective Melendez being asked um, what he did with Mr. Alexander's drive when he was forensically examining it, okay? Mr. What was his name again? Detective Melendez. Is he a forensic expert? He's he's supposed to be with Mesa Police Department. As a, In the forensics unit? In the forensics unit. Okay. And on January 14th, he testified a little bit about what he did. And so I'm looking at this question here, it says, okay, what else did you do? And his answer is, after that, I went through all the internet history registry of the computer itself. Do you see that? Yes. And the next question, the internet history, did you find any in looking at the internet history? And his answer is just basically just going on the internet for different things, like social media websites. Do you see that? Yeah. Yes. And so when he talks about going through internet history, when the Mesa Police Department's forensic expert talks about going through internet history, registry of the computer itself, if somebody actually did that, would they have been able to find porn sites that you did? It would have been possible to miss it because there's so much of it. it, it just, it's just the, it's not only the elephant in the room, it's the aircraft carrier in the room. I'm sorry, it's what? It's, it's not only the elephant in the room, it's, it's, it's the aircraft carrier in the room. You couldn't miss it. The thing is just completely inundated. I mean, I've got 166,000 hits on porn on that computer. And I haven't even typed in all the, I think by the time we get done, we'll have just a tremendous amount more, but it's just loaded. And so in your expertise, in your opinion, if somebody testified under oath that they looked through the internet history and didn't find any pornography on this computer, is that even, would that ever even be possible? Objection vouching. Distinct. Somebody who has forensic expertise Objection vouching. But I didn't ask a question. Finish the question. Mm -hmm. okay. Somebody who has inter somebody who has forensic expertise, even a five day program, if they look through the internet history, that like it says here, or somebody testified under oath that they did, if they look through the internet history, would that person with even five days of expertise training, would they have been able to find the form? It, it would have been impossible to miss. And just impossible to miss. Thank you. Nothing further. Cross examine it. Cross-examination. Sir, are you familiar with an individual by the name of Lonnie Dworkin? Yes. And he's actually somebody who is an expert who worked with the defense on this case, right? I believe so. 
And you believe so because you've seen him and you've talked to him in court during the prior trial, right? A little bit. I don't know him that well, but I know of him. You sat and you talked to him. You were both in the courtroom at the same time during the last trial, right? I don't recall, actually. But you were in the courtroom, and so you know him from a different time? How do you know him? I know he's a computer expert, and I know people who know him. And with regard to this individual, did you know that he was hired by the defense to conduct this examination of the hard drive of the compact Rosario computer? Did you know that? I understood he was. Yes or no, do you know that? Judge, he's trying to answer the question. Can he answer it? Yes. I understand he was supposed to review the evidence he was presented. And did you know that he reviewed the same hard drive, or the information from the hard drive, and he also concluded and found that there wasn't these porn sites? Did you know that? I know that, for example. Yes or no, do you know what I just asked you? I relatively know it from testimony, yes. And he reviewed the hard drive that Mr. or Detective Melendez reviewed, and he also could find no porn. Did you know that? I think whoever imaged the drive from the forensic department, whoever gave that drive to Lonnie, did an improper drive. Overruled. The answer will stand. Next question. I believe that the clone or the partition or image that Mr. Dworkin was provided was not a raw file. Therefore, it could have been just a glossary. I didn't see what he reviewed. But more than likely, if they used in case to image it, all they got was some of the surface chaff. They didn't get deep into the drive. To do a forensic examination, it would be best to do a raw data recovery. Now, if Mr. Dworkin was not accessed to the drive himself, then he would have used the drive or the clone that your PD did. And if they only did an in case default search, then there's a good chance that they didn't get any of the deleted stuff. You're guessing, right? You're speculating because you don't know any of what you just told us, right? There's only two things I could have done. Do you know what Mr. Dworkin got to examine? Objection, Judge. He asked a question. Mr. Neumeister was about to answer it, and then Mr. Martinez goes on to his next question. Can we allow Mr. Neumeister to answer the question, please? Mr. Neumeister, did you need to say anything? Yes. In addition, go ahead. There's only two ways. There's only actually one way that he could have missed it, and that is if he was given an image of a drive that wasn't a raw image. And you don't know what he was given, as you said here, do you? No, I don't. But he could have been given a raw image, and he could have just missed it too, right? Objection, speculation. Overruled. Well, how do you know that there was no way he could have missed it? It's impossible to miss it on a raw drive. There's so much data there, Juan. It is packed with porn. That's what you're saying. You haven't examined the raw data, but the image, as you call it, the clone image that was taken by the Mesa Police Department back on June 11th of 2010. You haven't examined it, right? I did my own clone. I know you did your own clone, but your clone was done within the last year, wasn't it? Yes. And it was after somebody had accessed that computer on June 19th of 2009, right? Yes, but you got to... Yes or no, it was, right? Yes. You didn't think it important enough to go back to look at the, as you're calling it, the clone drive that was taken back on June 11th of 2008. You didn't do that. Okay, you're missing the whole point here. I'm not asking you that. I'm asking you, you did not go back and look at the clone drive, as you're calling it, that was taken by the Mesa Police Department on June 11th of 2008, right? You didn't. There was no need. You didn't do it, did you? I didn't need to. You didn't do it, though, did you? Do you know why? I'm not asking you why. You didn't do it, did you? Yes or no? It was an incompetent clone. Didn't know it needed to do it. Yes or no? No. Sir, one of the other things that you told us when you conducted this examination was that this drive from the compact Versario, one of the things that you told us was that on June 19th of 2009, it was accessed, turned on, right? That's correct. And it was turned on at 2.58 p.m., right? I don't have my drive in front of me, but if you're reading that. I know. Just tell me what it was. Take a look at what you need to take a look. Can I get my laptop back, please? Okay. 
You go ahead. Yes, go ahead. And it was turned off at 3.10 p.m., right? On which date? The only date that we're talking about, June 19, 2009. Right. And that's a total of 12 minutes that it was on, right? That's correct. So then if somebody testified under oath and said that it was on for hours, they would be wrong, according to you. Objection right? mischaracterizes the testimony. Overall, let me answer the question. They would be wrong, wouldn't they? It wasn't on for hours. Pardon? It wasn't on for hours. Right, so you're saying they would be wrong because it was only on for 12 minutes. Objection, it's improper impeachment asking about another witness's credibility. Overall, you may answer. I can only speak for what I see in front of me. Um, and we're going by the hash values, and that's why I don't need to see your other clone, because the hash values are going to be the same on all the clones. So this data is correct. This is how long it was on. So no matter who clones it, the hash values are going to be the same, whether Lonnie cloned it, whether you cloned it. It's just going to depend on the depth of the clone. Was it just a partial clone? Was it a compressed clone that makes a huge difference? Or was it a raw image? I'm not asking you that. I'm just saying if somebody came in, whether they cloned it or didn't clone it or were there, and they said it was on for two hours, your information indicates it was only on for 12 minutes, right? That's correct. One of the other things that you talked about were the some telephones, some cell phones. Do you remember talking to us about them this afternoon? Yes. And you indicated to you that it was unusual because they didn't have any SIM cards, right? That's correct. Well, sir, so you're saying that to you it seems kind of not right that these phones didn't have a SIM card in them, right? You can't make a call without a SIM card. Right. So what you're saying is then that is that the defendant, who they took it from, somehow was involved in some shenanigans with these cell phones. Objection, argumentative. And these cell phones did not come from this area. Same. Well, do you know where these phones came from? The evidence lockup. Pardon? The evidence lockup, when I got them, they were in police no, custody. originally, do you know where these phones came from? I would imagine one No, was... I want you to imagine, yes or no, do you know where they came from? No, I saw and... them when they were police, from the police evidence locker. And you don't know where the police got them from, right? Uh, no. Right, and you don't know what condition they found them in, right? That's correct. So it could be that you don't know, it could be that the, the Mesa Police Department found them without SIM cards, right? That's one explanation, right? I've never seen a phone come to me without a SIM card. Well, that's what you're saying, but you weren't there when these phones were seized, were you? No. And they could have been found without a SIM card, right? If somebody was not using these yes phones as phones. No. Yes or no? A very small chance, maybe yes. You don't know because you weren't there, do you? No, I wasn't. You don't even know the date they were seized. No. You don't know the condition, right? No. You don't know who the officers were that were doing it, no. were seizing it. All you know is that all you can talk about is the fact that there wasn't a SIM card there, right? Or data cards. Right. SIM card or data card, right? Yeah. And the other thing, you also talked about a, um, a video recorder, a camera, right? Correct. And you talked about it being damaged, right? Correct. Did you read the police reports about that? No. Do you know how the damage came about? I didn't accuse anybody of damaging. I'm just saying how it was when I found it. Well, and you're saying somehow that there's something inappropriate about the fact that that camera was damaged, right? I believe I said there was something unusual about all the all the evidence I looked at. I'm, I'm talking about the camera right now. That's all I'm talking about. Objection foundation, which camera? Sustained. There was only one camera that was damaged, in other words, that had the door sort of off. And you showed us a picture, right? Correct. And that particular camera, you noted that that damage to you was something unusual, right? Correct. And something unusual in the sense that there was some malevolent activity associated with it, right? I didn't say that. Well, you didn't say that, but that's what you implied, right? I was asked if I found unusual. I usually don't find cameras that are smashed in police custody. And just because, just the mere fact that the camera was smashed to you indicated that there was some sort of problem with it, right? Well, there's definitely a problem with it. You can't play back any files. In terms of misconduct, to you, if there's something that's damaged, that to you indicates some misconduct by the police, right? No, you're putting those words in my mouth. I didn't say that. That's not what you're saying then. No. It's just, it could have happened a number of ways, right? That's correct. And it could have been something that was done accidentally, right? Absolutely. Or if you read the police report, you would know that there's some indication as to how it happened. But you haven't read that part of the police report, right? No. 
So you wouldn't know anything about how it happened then, right? That's correct. The other thing with the other one that talked about mass powering up, do you remember that one? Be more specific. Well, it's the external hard drive that said do not power up. That's correct. With regard to that, is there any indication that just because you can't power something up, that there's some sort of malevolent activity on the part of the police just because it can't be powered up? I never said that. I just said it couldn't be powered up, so I didn't power it up. Right. And that doesn't mean that anybody did anything, or there was any misconduct associated with that external hard drive, right? No, it just wouldn't power up. Right. But you were asked questions about it, and you answered questions about it, right? That's correct. Getting back to the compact Presario computer, it is not a Dell computer, is it? I'm basically not concerned about the computer. I'm concerned about the hard drive. Sir, I'm asking you, the compact Presario computer is not a Dell computer, right? I don't believe it was manufactured by Dell, although they sometimes subcontract these things out. I don't know. You don't know if it's manufactured by Dell. You think that it may be manufactured by Dell? They subcontract these things out. I mean, just because you buy an Acer computer doesn't manufacture it. I mean, it was made in Acer. It could have been made by a Chinese company. Again, I think we're getting away from the actual points of the real case of what was on the hard drive. Well, I'm asking you some questions, and are you saying you don't want to answer my questions? No, I just think you're – okay, go ahead. You're making judgments about my questions. You don't like the questions. Is that what this is? I just think it's irrelevant. Right? You don't like my questions, right? I think they're irrelevant. You're trying to spin around the fact that there's 160,000 hits of porn on that computer when you guys said there was none. Well, my question to you is, this compact Presario computer is not a Dell computer, is it? Okay, fine. Okay, fine means what to you? You're the expert. I'd have to look at who manufactured the actual thing, and I wasn't asked to do that. And you haven't taken a look at that? No, I was asked to look at the drive, the contents of the drive. And so the accurate, the accuracy of your information involving these alleged porn sites that were on the computer, that certainty as to those is the same certainty that you have as to this compact Presario computer in terms of whether or not it's a Dell or not. Is that what you're saying? That is hilarious. No. So the answer is no. What I'm saying is this. The data is there. Any competent forensic expert who reviews that drive is going to come up with the exact same. Any competent forensic expert that reviews that drive, any competent forensic expert is going to come up with the exact same data I came up with, if not more. So you're saying that Lonnie Dworkin is incompetent. I didn't say. Right. I'm not talking about any specific person. I don't know what drive Lonnie looked at. I'm just saying the drive that I looked at, the way we found it, I had three different guys working on this thing. We all found the same stuff separately. Assuming that he looked at the same drive that Detective Melendez, the person that you were talking about who testified, assuming that Lonnie Dworkin looked at the same drive, you're saying that Lonnie Dworkin is incompetent. No, I'm saying. No, I'm saying that he was probably given an inferior image, but I don't know. But you don't know, do you? No, I just said that. But you added something in front of it saying he probably was given, and then you indicated what you thought he was given, right? How else would you miss something like this? It's so simple to find this stuff. How do you miss this stuff? The only way you can miss it, according to you, is if Lonnie Dworkin was incompetent, right? Or if you were trying to keep it from evidence. Right. And you keep adding that. But one of the ways that you can show, or one of the indications are, is that it could be that Lonnie Dworkin was incompetent, right? I'd have to see the materials he looked at. And he was given, I don't believe he had the opportunity to clone a drive. What if I then changed it and said, well, what you're telling us is that Detective Melendez was incompetent, right? You would say yes to that, wouldn't you? I would say that whoever imaged that drive didn't do it correctly, and it shouldn't be working in forensics. Detective Melendez imaged that drive. You're saying that he analyzed the clone from that drive. What you're saying is that he's incompetent, right? I'm saying he missed 166,000 porn hits, and he said there was no porn under oath. I would say that's not exactly state of the art. So you're saying he was incompetent, right? Either that or he did not testify truthfully. Or he was incompetent, right? You don't know what he did, right? 
I can only go by what I found as opposed to what... And then with regard to Mr. Dworkin, one of the things that you can then tell us since he analyzed, if he analyzed the same drug, is that either he's incompetent or didn't testify truthfully, right? Or he was given a drive clone that was incomplete, like the one that was probably taken off of in case, that was not a complete in-depth clone, but just a scan or what we call the default. You keep talking about a drive that was incomplete. You keep saying that without any knowledge because you never even looked at the drive to start with, did you? I just think you don't understand computers, Juan. I think you don't understand what I'm trying to say because you don't... Let me explain the way this thing works, okay? Can I explain that? No. I'm asking you whether or not you're making these statements without having looked at the original cloned drive produced by the Mesa Police Department. You didn't look at it, did you? I don't work off other people's work. I do my own. Right. So the answer is you didn't look at it, right? Yes, because I didn't work... Because I know I was going to come up with the same hash values as far as the proof of files. And that's... The hash values are basically the SHA-2 files are going to say when the files were put on the computer. So it basically is going to validate the files. And you do your own work, sir, but it's kind of in such a way that you have to do it not once, but you have to do it three times because why? The first time, were you incompetent in making the clone? I just couldn't believe what I found compared to what the testimony said. It didn't make sense. Well, and so you went back a second time. Is it because you were incompetent the first time? No, I gave it to three different teams to look at. And then you went back a third time, right? That's correct. Did you go back a third time to break the computer? Is that why you went back? Why would I do that? Well, you were able to do it three times. Now the computer's broken, isn't it? I don't think it's broken. What are you talking about? Well, you don't think the computer's broken, right? No, show it to me. We will. We will present evidence that you broke the computer. Did you do it intentionally or did you do it negligently? Objection, argumentative. That's just slime. That's just slime. Hold on. Overruled. However, we're going to take a break at this time, so we're going to take a ten-minute recess. Ten-minute recess. Thank you. Martinez, you may continue briefly. Sir, you indicated to us that you went to the Mesa Police Department and you created three clones of the compact Desario hard drive. No, three clones. Two of the compact Desario and one of the other drive. Okay, so you did two clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. This one that you allege has all these ports on it. It does. I'm not alleging. It has it on it. Those are the ones you did it twice, correct? Right. Do you know the dates that you did those? I'd have to look it up because I think I did four different jobs that day. Sir, you indicated to us that you went to the Mesa Police Department and you created three clones of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Desario computer. Correct. Okay, so you did three clones of the hard drive of the compact Des
K as in captive. Yeah, and it's the brand new version of FTK. It's what? The brand new version of FTK, the very, very latest one. It's FTK, so you say it's brand new version, but what is it called? It's called FTK. Just FTK? Does yeah. It have two, three, or four options? No, just FTK. It's available to be purchased anywhere, correct? No. You have to buy a license, and you have it's very expensive software. You can buy it, but it's very expensive. But you have that? Uh, actually, I don't use that. We have an other a computer expert that uses it. And was it used with regard to the contact? Or yes. It was used. Did you use it, or was it somebody else? I used autopsy, and another person yeah. used Just to make it quicker, did you use FTK, whatever version, on the contact Rosario computer? Did you use it yourself? No, I used autopsy. And the results that we have up here, are they as a result of this FTK or not? Those are a result of autopsy. So FTK doesn't apply to this? Um, FTK does because it helped me look for additional search terms. In other words, the research that the other guys did helped me to look for specific other terms. But FTK, it helped you to look for specific search terms, but you keep telling me that you only used autopsy. I only used autopsy, correct. But did somebody in your company use FTK? Yes. And they used the FTK on the compact Rosario that's, archive. That's correct. On the clone that you made on two separate occasions. That's correct. The, the autopsy, is that spelled A-U-T-O-P-S-Y? Yes, that's correct. And does it have anything else after it? Uh, 311. 311? It's just the reversion, the visual, version number. And 311, and who's it manufactured? Who puts it out? It's it's basically a freeware. It's it's a open source. There's a lot of people who work on it. And that's what you use, and that's what assisted you in obtaining the results that you have in this case. Yes. Uh, again, we used FTK to, to corroborate because FTK is a known uh, a known piece of forensic software, uh, more so than autopsy. In other words, FTK is something you buy. Autopsy is freeware. So. You yourself personally first used autopsy. autopsy, and then once you were done with that, somebody then used FTK. That's correct. Who's that person that used the FTK? What's his or her name? Uh, Tony Klump. Tony what? Klump. Spell the last name? K-L-U-M-P. K-L-U-M-P? Yeah. And you previously disclosed to us, the state, a reported clone, and it had the name of Tony on it. Is that who, is that, is that, who, what was that about? We had changed FTK onto a new server, a uh, brand new system, a lot faster server. And when he made the first clone, uh, the FTK grabbed the wrong image. That was our fault. Uh, I don't have anything else, Judge. All right. For the reasons we discussed in chambers, we are going to recess for today. We're going to continue this hearing on December 4 at 9.30 a.m. And I believe the request is Mr. Meemeister that you provide copies to the state of the two clones that your organization made on the contact Rosario computer. Okay, they How long will it take you to do that? Not long, but they already have one. The second clone we gave them is a correct clone. We double checked it. Okay, so we'll need the other one. That's correct. Provided. <laughs> well, All right. Wait, wait, I think, may, may I? You may. <laughs> He's saying, Mr. Neumeister, you're saying that you've already provided the second clone. The second clone we've uh, provided is is the exact clone of what I used. So, if you were ordered to provide a clone of what you worked on, you would say, "I've already done That's that." That's correct. So, but I didn't provide a clone of the first time we imaged it. Only the second time. Okay. So, is the state asking for a clone of the first time they imaged it? Well, just to, so that we're clear. <coughs> In order to conduct a test, we need to have exactly what it was that he used to arrive at his conclusions. What we are getting is not an exact copy of the hard drive. What we are getting are the results rather than the actual raw data, for lack of a better term. I want I'm requesting that he be ordered to produce the raw data that he produced when he went over to the Mesa Police Department, hooked up whatever he hooked up, and created the disk. I want the raw data. I just, I just want to make sure this is the same disk that's 
that you guys have had for six years, but you want to use our copy of it. Is that correct? Judge, I don't think that's appropriate. As you know what I'm asking, after the compact Rosario computer was turned on and subsequent years to that, he made a copy of this hard drive, which I'm calling the raw data. I don't want his interpretation. I want the raw data so that we can verify his results. So whether or not it's something we've had before or not is not the issue. I'm asking that you order him to turn that over to us. Do you have that available? Yes. We've already turned it in. We've already given it to him. What he's using is what I have. That's the issue, Judge, is that I think that the state's experts aren't understanding that what Mr. Neumeister already turned over to them is exactly what they're asking for now. Okay. Okay. If he's saying that that is the raw data. Is that what you're saying, sir? I didn't verify it myself from what Mr. Klump said. The second drive, he double-checked it. It's the exact clone of what I provided him. So I haven't seen it myself. Do you have that with you today? I do not have it with me today, but what I was told was that what was marked into evidence is exactly the, to date, is the clone. No. No, no, no. That is just what we used today. Well, I don't have it with me. Can you go over and get it? I can go over and get it. Do you have a few minutes? You can stay here. Sure. Judge, it's actually at the Mesa Police Department, so I can't go over and get it. I thought I didn't make a copy. Could we maybe just get it, get the original one that was, the second one that we delivered to them? Could we get that and then Mr. Neumeister can verify that it's what they needed? Yes. I would also, if I may, ask to see the drive that was supposedly destroyed, because we had pictures of it before, and I would like to compare it. Mr. Martinez said we destroyed it. That's a different issue, and we can address that later, Judge. Whether it's destroyed or not, I want a copy of the raw data. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make two copies of that, one for the court so that it stays here in court so there's not a problem with people saying that we changed it, another one for me to keep, and then we'll review it with him whenever he can do it. We can't do it today because it takes some time for them to get it over here, but we can do it Monday, maybe perhaps during lunch. That's fine, but I just want to be clear that what, if you want Mr., if the state wants Mr. Neumeister to check, triple check now what it is that he gave him for the second time, we want the original that what we turned over, not a copy of what we turned over. Is that what the state is saying that we'll get on Monday? Well, let me just jump in here as far as clone time. I'm working for Yavapai PD tomorrow, and then on Sunday I leave for a capital case in North Carolina, so I can't get to this until I come back from Carolina. Could we ask before he leaves to verify himself the two raw data clones and make them himself? He's already made them. That's what he's saying, Judge. But he didn't verify it, just like the first one belonging to that Tony and the mistake that was made. Well, the second one was verified. It just wasn't verified by Mr. Neumeister, so that's what we're saying. If we could just get that, if Mesa can deliver it today, then we can get it. As I said. In light of your travel schedule, I think it may be easier if you just make copies of the two clones and provide them to defense counsel who can provide them to the state, and then that way we don't have to involve you in reviewing what's already been provided to the state. Can I do it after I return? Because I have a slammed schedule up until I leave. When are you returning? Hopefully Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right, we're adjourned for today. See you on Monday. Thank you.